full-time wedding filmmakers. We've been shooting weddings for the last 14 years. We have, I would say, over 600 weddings under our belt at this point. Definitely over 600, and yeah. So many more to go. We're not slowing down. Right. So we are from a very small town in southern Indiana, about 19,000 people. And it has its challenges because one of the challenges is we started our business during a kind of a poor time. Probably the worst time you could think to start a business, yes. especially in a small rural community. Yeah, so we, we started our business in like the 2006, 2008 era, mm -hmm. and whenever the market was kind of collapsing, our business was taking off at that point. So, you know, we had a lot of challenges that we faced because of that. And we didn't start at weddings you know, like this. Like this. Uh, we spent a lot of time in the basement of the local, you know, VFW. Moose Lodge, spent a lot of time there. This and if is, you would have this told is me, one of the venues that we were at yes. almost every weekend when we first started. Right, and if you would have told me, you know, a few years ago that when we were shooting weddings and charging, we were very happy and, and we felt, you know, privileged to be doing something we love and getting paid, you know, four or $500 for a wedding. We were thrilled at that point, but if you would have told me that in just a few years, we would be able to charge five figures and, and get some five figure, um, not only weddings, but also corporate work, I would have said you're nuts. We're in a little tiny town, middle of nowhere. There's no way that we can take it to that level. So as things progress, this past year, we've had a lot of great opportunities. Um, specifically, this wedding we shot this summer, um, the bride, she is Pence's niece. Mm -hmm. So he was in attendance, and that was a whole other ball of craziness. But I do have to say that if you ever do a, shoot a wedding and you are dealing with the Secret Service, be careful how you put together and take apart your monopod. <laughs> you get a lot, of, you weird get a lot of weird looks. Lots of weird looks. We also shot a 60th birthday party for one of the wealthiest families in Indiana, yes. and their entertainment for the evening was none other than Earth, Earth Wind, and Fire. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yes. It was pretty intense. It was a crazy evening, and we had such a and great a birthday time. Party. At, that's yeah, crazy. that birthday party, yes. And we also had the opportunity to do destination weddings. So we, were, we started our business very local in a rural area, and then we gradually grew from that to regional, the national, and international. And what I like to say is hopefully intergalactically. Intergalactically. At some point. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be the first ones to volunteer. Absolutely. This year, we also did something cool. Oh, this last year, I had the opportunity of working with um, Spike TV's Ink Master Show. We were flown on to New York City and did a lot of the behind-the-scenes um, uh, feature for this particular personality. And again, the, going back to being in a rural area, if you would have told me a few years ago that uh, somebody would want to hire me and fly me to New York to shoot for um, a major TV personality, I, I would, again, say, you're crazy, you're nuts. I'm in this little tiny town in the middle of nowhere. Nobody knows who I am, but we have been fortunate enough to through just producing great content and, and working very hard to get opportunities like that. Um, another way our business has grown is we've taken on more and more commercial work. Now, the commercial work that we take on, um, they found us through weddings. So they are really interested in storytelling. They want us to tell the story of their company. So right. this is a video for a multi-billion dollar corporation. They have their 50th anniversary and they wanted us to tell the whole story of the 50 years and sh display it at this big party and it went over very well. Right, and one thing, we've worked with them, this we're going on our third year of uh, producing content for them, and one of the things they love about the way we shoot and tell their story is we go to the job site where some of these guys are getting paid, you know, $100 plus an hour, and we don't slow down production. We go out there and we shoot it very similarly to the way we shoot a wedding, so we don't stop anything and pose and, and you know, um, stop production at all because like, like I said earlier, you know, some of these guys running these trucks are getting paid $100 an hour. They can't just stop and let me take pictures of them. That costs the company extra money. So this particular corporation loves how we come in with a very minimal kit and we don't you know, ruffle a lot of feathers and we shoot things as they're happening in a very creative and professional way. So you may be saying to yourself now, um, oh, I forgot. I forgot about this slide. We also get to do really cool stuff like this. Like this. You know, we get to speak cool on the people. stage, we host workshops and seminars, and we just love to be able to teach to elevate the side of the industry because yes. we want the films of this year and the coming years to be better than they ever have before. Absolutely. So here we were going. Here you we may go. be wondering how in the heck did you go from shooting in the basement of the VFW and the Moose Lodge to 
you know, these worldwide things, working for billionaires, and we're gonna kind of go through some of our steps. Yeah. First of all, it's you clearly you have to produce great films. Great content, yes. So each film that we produce, we want it to be better than the last one. Right, and one of the ways that we do that is we don't really ever compare our work to somebody else's work. We compare our work to our own work. So the, the film I'm creating today, I want it to be better in, in some aspect, in all aspects, hopefully, than it was the, the, the piece of content, the, uh, the video, the, the photo that I shot last week. I get bored with the same content all the time, so I like to just try to outdo myself. That way our content stays relevant and fresh. And then another way that we have been able to grow our business in a small area is networking. We placed a lot of emphasis on that, especially whenever we were first starting out. Yes. Um, we went to every networking event that we could get our hands on, not just in our lo local small town, but you know, in the region. Mm -hmm. And I do want to draw your attention to Monica. She's the blonde on the left, but we, we'll we talk take about it, more about her later. Yeah, yeah, we take it another step further. You know, people know whenever you're just schmoozing with them, but whenever you really take the time to, you right. know, get a personal connection with them, remember their kids' names, ask them about that, you know, go to dinner with them, that's that's a huge impact. Right, and really reach out to them because, I mean, it, people know, and I know, you know, if somebody's just schmoozing on you to try to see what they can get, and there's the light. <laughs> just to try to see what they can get out of you, see maybe what jobs you can get them. So by taking a, just getting to know these people, some of these people in the industry are, are literally our, our best friends we've ever had and our, our lifelong friends we've had for years just because of the introductions and the opportunities that have afforded us just from meeting them. And you know, uh, this was a really cool just get together at uh, a resort for all the, the wedding vendors in the area. Yep. And just getting to know them on a personal level is, is just priceless. Not only does it enrich your business, but it enriches your personal life and then another thing that we discussed whenever we first started is social positive social media so whenever we first started social media was actually not a thing you know Facebook didn't exist Instagram did not exist so as soon as you know we logged on and got our first Instagram and Facebook account Gary and I sat down and had a discussion about how we were going to run it right. which I think is very important yeah and the keystone of that is and again, I've said this every day, positivitude. Still it's a made-up word. word, doesn't, doesn't, okay, it is a word that's on, it's on Instagram now, it's a hashtag, is it positivitude. Trending? So everything that we decide to post, that we, even in our personal lives even, we want it to have a positive impact on whoever sees it. So you come to our Facebook page, or you meet us in person, we want you to walk away with a big old smile on your face, having us had a positive impact on your life, and hopefully that's going to attract other positive people in your life, and just you know continue the chain, and just make, like I said earlier, enrich your life. Another thing to help st yourself stand apart on, po on social media is, you know, to rise above just the cell phone photo. So right. grab something like the RX100 Mark V, a very small pocket Fits size, pocket. 24 to 70, and post beautiful images instead of you know, just relying on your cell phone. Because we all have one, but that gets lost in the shuffle. You right. want to stand out whenever you're on when, social media. Yeah, when people are just you know, scrolling through thousands of pictures on your Facebook feed, um, if, 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 if you know, most people are using their, their, their phones, and when, when they see a beautiful colored image, and even from that 20, I call it a pocket 24 to 70, it's so small, it just pops on the feed and you, your attention's drawn to it and it'll make people interact more. And then the final thing, and I think it is the most important, is a great client experience. Yes. We've taken a lot of time in our career to work on having a great client experience. From the time they send us an email to the time that we deliver their final film and beyond, we want them to have a positive and a great experience with us. Yes. Um, one of my very best friends is our former bride, so we just wanted everyone to have a great time with us. Now, my friend Monica, we showed you on one of the previous slides, she sends thank you, wonderful thank you cards at the end of every wedding after we've worked together. And I just, there were several standouts in these that I wanted to show you. Um, your spirit and energy are contagious and I just adore working with you. And then my favorite, of course, is my clients always end up raving about their day with you. Thank you for always smiling. Yes. Now, how often on a wedding day do you not feel like smiling? You're hangry, you're tired. You're in the Midwest, the humidity is 90%, you know, <laughs> 82 degrees outside. No, probably 98 degrees. 
you're really hot and sweaty, but taking that time to just you know, smile and be positive and uplifting. Um, usually if you're not in a good mood and you start smiling, even if it's fake, it'll put yourself, you'll put yourself in a good mood after that. Yes. So this is how we want our brides to feel on the wedding day. We want the spot, the energy that you put out is what you get back. So when you're smiling and having a good time, they are too. And that's, that, this is how we want our brides to feel. Yes. Now, how to provide our clients a better experience on the wedding day. First of all, you need to be interactive. You need to talk to them and help calm them down whenever they get ex you know, anxious or excited. Right. And you want to put them at ease with you know, casual conversation. It doesn't even have to be about the wedding day, but just helps to put them at ease. Right, and don't be like a creeper in the corner with a camera. I, when I first started, I was shy. So I was in the bag with like an 8,000 millimeter just trying to get what I, what I could see. And now, you know, I'm, I'm up in the action. I'm, I'm with the groomsmen. I'm hanging out with them and being a part of their day as less of a spectator and more of an actual part of it. And sometimes if Amber comes in, she's like, you got to move because you're too close. You got to get back or you're going to be in the video. Another thing that we do, we are very conscious of the couple's needs. And that means, you know, whenever you are out at that bridal portrait session and it's taking, you know, feels like an hour and it's 100 degrees, you know, ask the bride for a water. Hey, you need you a know, water. Do you yeah, need just... a water? Do you need, you know, you just need to be aware that they are having a stressful time too and to help calm them down. Like as soon as you see those shoulders start to go up from, from nervous energy, just, you know, talk them down a little bit because we've shot 600 weddings They've only been to one, you know, they've been in a few, this is their only one, so. And occasionally you have to run interference, like if there's, there's sometimes there's that, that bridesmaid who just freaks out over the littlest thing and then transfers that energy to the bride. So yeah. Amber has to kind of like run interference and kind of make a little that. barrier between them. I have done that, or yes, I have done that, so. You wonder how in the heck do you have time to do all of that and shoot and deal with your gear, so. How we have managed to do that is we pare down what we bring to a wedding. Right. This allows us to have less option paralysis. So whenever you look at your kit and you're going to say the photo session and you think, okay, so I have this and this and this and this, what am I bring with me? Am I gonna, you know, bring what lens, what camera? And then all of a sudden the moment's over and right. you've lost it. And I used to be one of those guys who had to have, you know, all the primes. I had four Pelican cases on a, you know, on a four wheel dolly. And like she would, she would say like, okay, there's a beautiful moment with, uh, let's say the grandparents and, and one of the grandchildren uh, or great grandchildren, especially. And I'll, if you, I see it, then I would reach down and then have these options. Like, okay, I got this, I got this focal length. I got this, I got this camera. This one's better for this. And then by the time I decide and get everything put together, the moment's gone. So by minimalizing that kit, it gives me less option paralysis so I can, I can just get the shot done quickly. And that allows us to create more freely. And uh, however, it does not limit our capabilities. Right. So this next slide is what we bring on a wedding day. This is it. We have our think tank airport security, and then we have a canvas, canvas bag, bag with yeah. our Sue tripods, monopods, and a couple light stands. And that is it. One person can pick this up and go anywhere. And One person can carry everything, yeah. That is huge because before we were had way too much stuff and we couldn't move around quickly enough because in the Midwest a lot of the times you have multi, you're going to multiple venues. Mm -hmm. So it's really difficult to get all of your stuff, you know, go around. Right, and in you know, in the Midwest, a lot of the smaller towns, you would be able to, you know, pull up to the church and park your vehicle and have access to your vehicle all day, whereas some of the larger metropolitan areas, you have to park your car in a parking garage somewhere, and that was really, um, that cost us a lot of time, it was very prohibitive in how we could work because we had to bring all this gear with us everywhere we went. And by downsizing, and if you, ha if you have a chance, there's some cards up here that has a detailed description of every little thing that's in that bag. Now, I'm not gonna say that bag isn't absolutely full because it, there's a lot of gear in there. But we have a rule that if it doesn't fit in that bag, does not I'm go. not bringing it to a wedding. Does not go with For us. instance, the new R3 just came out a few, sorry, um, this is A7, a, so many numbers. Seven three yes, A seven three just, just came out um, a couple days ago. Or we had to get our hands on it. You can play with it over here too. And so I'm trying to figure out where can I put it in my bag. But I don't think it'll fit. So I'm going to have to probably get rid of one of my bodies to, to get that that uh, seven three in there. So we're going to quickly go through how we utilize each piece of gear on on the wedding day. 
Now, one of the, you know, the first part that happens is the bridal prep. So we're going into the bride prep. I'm on a monopod with the A7S II and the 70 to 200 G Master. That is my favorite setup. I'm on it for about 98% of the day. It's yeah. my jam. I can do so much with it. And I get the most creative shots with it because I'm so uh, well versed in it, but also, you know, I'm looking for like things like reflections and foreground and, you know, shooting through um, uh, glass and things like that. So you, you can be really creative and just use the one lens. Right. And I think, at least for me, um, forcing myself to use like one or, or two lenses really pushes my, my mind to think on a different creative level to whereas before I would think of which uh, focal length I need to, to get different shots and stop there and think about it by having, let's say all I have is my 85 with me, I, it pushes my, my mind to get different creative shots and different angles that I wouldn't normally have thought about if I would have had a 24 to 70 or maybe a 35 and then all these other options as well. So for me at least it really helps my creative process. So while I'm shooting the bride prep, Garrett is usually hanging out with the guys. Right. And he keeps a even more small kit than I do. Yes, and one of the ways that I keep my groom very calm and just relaxed is when I show up for the, for the groom and bride prep, um, I may spend a little time with the bride with, with Amber, but when I'm with the groom, this is my kit. This is all I bring. So, you know, I would used to go into a room, maybe I had, the, um, I, at one point I had the big two-handed uh, DJI Ronin, uh, tripod, lights, microphones, things like that. Now, I walk into the room early in the morning and, hi, how you doing? Usually it's the first time we've met and usually the guys are super shy. You know, they're doing the video because, you know, um, either their, their parents wanted it or probably the bride wanted it more than anything. And so they're not really keen on getting their, their uh, photo or video. But walking in there just like a photographer with not a lot of gear and I, because of the uh, five axis image stabilization, every clip you're seeing here is, is from my camera um, shooting handheld either with the 24 to 70 or the 55 Zeiss 1.8. And it just, it just makes me more nimble and I can jump up and jump around, get tight shots and low shots. And just a, a quick tip when you are shooting handheld for video, um, a lot of times you want to sit there and just try to hold it deathly still. But when you're trying to hold it really still, some, sometimes I accidentally will jiggle it. But if you just kind of hold it to your body and then maybe introduce some organic body movement into the camera, that has a really nice organic um, movement that translates well to video. So when we go on to the next part of the day, the ceremony. So after um, Garrett's done with the groom, because he only takes like five minutes and the yeah. bride takes a lot longer. Um, he will head to the ceremony and start setting up our, all of our gear, our audio, our light, whatever we're gonna bring that day. And uh, then he starts getting B-roll of everything. And, but now that we have the A9 and the phase detection autofocus that goes along with it, oops. I skipped ahead there. It's, well, it's, with me, it started with the, the uh, A6500, the, the autofocus system. Now, I've shot film or film weddings for about 14 years, and I thought, you know, if I'm not using uh, manual focus and pulling focus manually for everything, I'm not a real filmmaker. <laughs> so I would, you know, pull mo focus manually, and the most stressful part of the day for me was that walk down the aisle right there, because that is the one shot all day of anything else that happens. You cannot mess that one up. And, you know, I'm not perfect pulling manual focus, and some days I would have my good days, and some days not so good. But with the, the new uh, phase detection autofocus system on the A9, um, this is the uh, A7R3, and now the um, 7 III, I'm able to get shots like this and not stress so much about focusing, especially with the face detection. Yes. Yeah. So another camera that we utilize on a wedding day, we have a wide back shot, and that is the AX100. Uh, we like that to cover the whole um, ceremony site, and we love the way that it grades out of um, in our color grading software. Yeah, the line you see seeing going across, that is uh, showing the difference like straight out of camera, and then after I've taken it into post-production and added some um, S-curves to it, to try to bring down the highlights a bit and maybe the shadows up, and just give it a more cinematic look. And with the XAVCS 4K um, file format, it is a really rich, um, file and you can do a lot of that coloring in post and I, I really enjoy that. Now, one thing that we've really enjoyed using lately are, is the RX-Zero. Garrick likes to call them 
Video grenades. Little video grenades. So we can set them up all around in places that you can't physically be during the wedding, like in the front on the upper left one. You can't hang out there the rest, you know, the whole day. Right. So we love to put those on little mini tripods. And then like the one on the upper um, right, uh, that's an awesome, cool angle, but we're not going to sacrifice our un other angles for that. Right. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm not going to sacrifice that shot of her coming down the aisle over that one, but I still want that one. So I was able just to run upstairs and have a little clamp, a magic arm, clamp to the ledge and get, uh, you know, I recorded for an hour so I could have that one minute walk, but it just gives me a very creative and very um, unique angle that I wasn't able to have before. Uh, so whenever we shot Earth, Wind and Fire earlier this year, um, Garrett had all these really cool ideas to clamp, you know, the Arc Zeros to yes. um, the drums or the trombone. Like he was really, you know, trying oh, to be I was creative pumped, with it. I, I played the drums and I wanted, I wanted those old drummer angles and give props to the drummer. And we get there and they say no way. No, sir, that's not. That is gonna not going to happen. So. But we were fortunate enough; we were able to mount them around the band, so behind the drummer, off to the side. And I think I had five going. So I was able to get, again, um, you know, I couldn't be on the stage physically, but with these cameras there, I was able to get some different angles that there's no way else I, I could have gotten those. And it has, has um, picture profiles, um, S-Log, uh, a lot of uh, 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 cinema picture profiles to really give you a rich image that you can do a lot of coloring and post with. So these are some of the clamps that we use. Now, the RX-0 just uh, came out with, they have this it's Sony little came cable. out with this cable. Yes. So if you're doing like a run and gun interview, if you're walking around the trade show, trade show floor, like our, our man Jason Vong here shooting stuff, you can do like a, if you have an 85 or 70 millimeter um, on your main body, um, this is a 24 millimeter prime F4 Zeiss. So if I'm gonna you know, interview you and I'm, I'm shooting you, when I hit record with this cable, it triggers either the shutter if you're on um, you know, doing photos or if you're shooting video, it, it activates the video on both your main body and this camera so you immediately have two angles to cut back and forth with. I haven't had a chance to use it, but this one's mine, so I'm taking <laughs> it home, uh, whether they like it or not. So um, try that one out. of the most difficult things about things like gimbals is focus. So Jason has a gimbal back there, and it's very difficult to focus that manually, so you have to have great autofocus to have all of those crystal clear images. And this is what we use during the you know photo session, we do B-roll, and then also like the reception party, we love to use it there. And so like with this shot right here, that's a, a 55 millimeter right. um, using the autofocus. And, correct, and you know, doing a manual focusing lens on a gimbal is tough. That's why most of my shots used to be on a 12 millimeter or 14 millimeter, because though that focal range of focal distance is very forgiving for focus. But you put a 55 on there at 1.8, if you're off just a little bit, man, you lose that sharpness. And so for instance, if I was gonna, you know, if you're my groom, I was gonna shoot you, I'd have to manually focus. And then as you walk around, try to keep the exact same distance between you and my manually focused lens. With the autofocus system, I can spin around the bride and groom, come in from behind them. Um, this is on the Sony 12 to 24, but on the other shots with the 55 1.8, get some really great shots that are just tack sharp. So as we progress f t through the day into the reception, um, we do the reception toasts. Now, before we would bring large lights that cast a lot of light because we required it, but now we are with the A7S II, we're able to use the light to create drama and effect um, and pop our subjects out of the background. Yes, rather than needing our, to bring lights to reception out of necessity, we bring them as accents, and it's really, as she just said, it really pops your subject out of, out of the, the, the background so you can really see the, who the main player of the video is. And the lights that we're using to light them right now, they're about the size of my hand and they fit in my pocket. They're very small and inconspicuous lights, so we're not bringing out very large um, pieces of equipment to light our receptions. And it's just another way that having a minimalizing kit has helped us. So, in conclusion, we feel like a minimum kit, something that's small and compact and easy to carry around, is going to give a maximum client experience. Right. We are you know, less worried about all of the stuff that we have to take with us, and we can focus a lot on our clients. So here's another one of our trophies, or thank you notes, that we have. Um, Claire and Adam's wedding was a few years ago, and she wrote this beautiful note to us, and I wanted to read a few clip. oh, that's the wrong pocket. <laughs> We're just gonna give away cash. No, that's, 
I wanted to read a few of the lines from it. So this is our, the beautiful Claire and Adam. We cannot thank you enough for your presence at our wedding day. Um, it was so evident to us how much you care about the people you were working with. I'm so appreciative to have you there to engage me in lighthearted conversation. You are, you know, we know your videos are great, she says, but it's a wonderful added bonus that you're amazing human beings. I would have fallen apart without your encouragement and calming presence. And I take so much, that takes, that makes me feel so good that we were able to help her have a better wedding day and an experience and that we weren't, that she was able to calm down and not be as stressed out on one of the happiest days of her life. Right, so. and if you just, I mean, just look at this image. Uh, oh, we lost it. Uh, if you could go back at the image. Um, just Amy's telling me look that we have at to go. Her, okay, we gotta go. <laughs> but just look how in her own world she is. She's not worried about, there's two, four, let's see, between us and the, and the, and the photographers, there's four people with cameras, click, 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 and directing them. She's in her own little world. She's relaxed. This is the happiest day of her life. And that's how I want every person that we film to feel, is just super relaxed. And by having not a lot of gear and just a minimal kit, the final result speaks for itself. Exactly. Yeah. So. Thank you very Thank much you for so listening much, to us. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming by. We really appreciate it.